Please? No? No rush. Don't. Don't let me, uh, don't let me interrupt you. Hi, and welcome back to Acorn Knits. My name's Natalia. I'm coming to you from Sydney, Australia. And this is just my little corner of the internet where I chat about what I'm working on and... That's pretty much it. It's a little early, I think, to say what this podcast is going to be, um, but that's what my plans are for it anyway. So I had every technical issue happen, pretty much, with last week's video. Aside from losing audio or losing the video files, everything went wrong. I had changed what software I used to edit the video from, and I should have really run some tests beforehand, but these were things that I just couldn't predict. So when I uploaded the video and edited everything, did all the cuts, everything like that, once I exported it out of the editing software, there was an issue with the audio syncing where it looked just like this. So I would speak and my mouth would not go in time with the audio. So that was the first issue. And then I tried all these different things to try and sync it back up. I couldn't work out why they weren't matching because in the uh, test file, it was fine. But it wasn't until I exported it that this syncing issue was happening. And I read a lot online and it was a lot of really in-depth tech kind of jargon that people were using to explain what was going on and that's just a bit too much for me. I'm pretty new to this, so it took me a little while of kind of trial and error to work out that what was going wrong is that um, the frame rate wasn't stable. It doesn't really matter, I guess, but... Do you want to be let out? I'll let him out and I'll come back. So once I figured out what the issue was, I was able to address it, but it did mean I had to edit the video all over again. Luckily, I think once you've done it the first time, the second time round goes so much faster. So I was grateful for that. But yeah, that was a huge learning curve for last week's lesson, <laughs> last week's lesson, for last week's episode. So hopefully going forward, I'll have less issues with getting videos out. I have so much newfound respect for people who upload YouTube videos on a really regular basis, especially these major YouTubers, people like PewDiePie who put videos out every single day. It is incredible. Just the amount of time that goes into it, I just feel like the amount of time it's taken to learn this editing software and edit the videos, I feel like I have no time for knitting. But I'm sure once I get kind of accustomed to it, I'll um, it'll be able to do it a lot faster. So in the meantime, please excuse if the videos are coming out at random times or they're not as consistent um, as I'd hope they would be. I would like to have one come up every week, but I think in the beginning, it's gonna be probably a little bit sporadic. Um, so please bear with me and hopefully I'll get more of a schedule once I get more accustomed to everything. So aside from my little tangent there, uh, I think I'll just catch you up on what I've been working on. So in my last episode I mentioned I was making a cardigan for my boyfriend's father and that's The Ranger by Jared Flood and I've still pretty much just been working almost exclusively on that. So I'll still work on some socks kind of between like I mentioned when I'm at work but when I'm at home this is pretty much all I'm working on. So I mentioned I wasn't sure how the sleeves were going to be joined into the body and it turns out that you had them on on hold, like the stitches on hold, and then you join that into the round um, just by knitting from the stitches that were on hold into along with the body. I don't think I'm explaining that very well. With both the body and the sleeves, you have an equal amount at the underarm put on waist yarn so that they can be seen together. So maybe it's easier if I just show you because I am terrible at explaining things. But you can see that the sleeves are joined in to the round there. And then underneath it is where these two will be seamed together so that there's not a gap in the underarm. So it'll be something like this, because right now there's a gap, but you don't want that there. And then you've got the sleeve opening. Yeesh. Oh. Okay. You'll just want to go out again, like a typical cat. It's like they know when it's going to be a disruptive time and that's when they decide after their eight hour nap that they'll, they'll wake up when it's the, the least convenient. Anyway. So the sleeves are all joined in. It's a little hard to see. I think it's all kind of scratched up. You can see the sleeve. 
and it's starting to get, you can see at each point, either side of the sleeve, are uh, some raglan shaping. So it's sort of hard to really distinguish the raglan shaping from the body. Um, the stitch pattern's almost identical, but I think once you go further up and you start to do some um, some shaping, like some decreases for the yoke, it's going to stand out a little bit more, um, and then you can have that more classic raglan raglan look. But yeah, it's coming along really well. Um, hopefully, no, I really don't know where I'll be with it next week. Um, it is going by pretty quickly, so I think, yeah, maybe. I don't know if I want to say that I'll be done with the collar. I think that's maybe a little ambitious. I'm a little nervous because I did get um, my boyfriend's dad to try it on and he's quite a muscular person, um, like very athletic. And so when he put the sleeves on, they were so tight and uh, they're gonna block out, but I feel like they're not gonna fit like they would on the model. And I went with his suggested size. I think it had seven inches five or seven inches of ease. Um, I just wonder if the pattern was more designed for kind of slim hipsters uh, that don't have thick forearms. <laughs> but I think it's gonna fit well on the body and at least I'm still gonna, gonna have the button band to add a bit of um, size there. But yeah, hopefully blocking will fix the issue, fix the issue with the sleeves. Cause it did fit him, but they were just very snug. And I think a slightly more not baggy, but a slightly looser fit is going to be nicer, especially if you're wearing a long, longer sleeve top beneath it. I think with this, with how tight they were, without it having been blocked, he could really only just wear a short sleeve. I think a long sleeve, it would catch the wrist and pull up, but we'll see. I'm really happy with how it's coming along. So that's the main product I've been working on. I do have some socks going, like I mentioned. But that's been really it, um, because my week's been taken up so much with editing and trying to fix those IT issues, I really haven't got as much done as I normally would, or as, and definitely not as much as I would like. But I do have something really exciting to share, because in my last video I mentioned that I'd ordered some yarn from overseas uh, for the set of style sweater that I'm going to make for my father. And so the order I placed was from Canada, and the tracking... Um, oh, that was it. So the order I placed was from Canada and they provided tracking and I was able to track it and it was no problem. And then one day when I went to track it, it said the tracking number wasn't available or that it sort of didn't exist and there was no tracking information, which was really strange. But I just thought, well, I mean, I know there's so many delays with COVID and there's less flights coming into Australia and I think just globally. So I thought I'm not gonna fuss about it. I'll just give it a little while, see when something shows up. And I swear, I've been waiting on this for probably at least a month. I ordered it definitely around Christmas and it, I mentioned it on the podcast and what happens a week later, it shows up. So the yarn arrived and it's the Raumagan and the name is Finnel. So I think they've maybe changed the name of it because I swear I've heard people refer to it as Finnelgan. Maybe that's just the nickname and the brand's Rauma. I don't know. Regardless, it's Norwegian yarn. Fingering weight, I think it's I probably shouldn't talk about whether it's worst it's spun or wool and spun. I don't think I'm at that level of spinning knowledge <laughs> to know. But it's um, it's a lot softer than I was expecting. So these are the colors I got. This one here, which I believe was an off-white or pure white. Um, that's the color code for reference. Okay. And it's a fingering weight yarn. Then the other one I got was a navy. I think it was meant to be slightly heathered. Regardless if you want to know the exact color code, that's it there. And so this is going to be the main color of the body. And then that will be um, for the lice and the sort of finer details for the color work. So the contrast color and the main color. I think the traditional Norwegian set of style sweaters tend to be predominantly black with a white contrast, but I think that's a little harsh. Um, harsher color contrast. I think the navy and the white will suit him a lot better because he has very similar coloring to me. So I think that will be a really nice pair. Now that the yarn's arrived, I can start casting on. So I guess I'll have two sweaters going at the same time. 
And so I mentioned how I wanted to knit the Setter Style sweater on Norwegian needles. So I went out and I bought a pair of Licker needles. Uh, they're the circular ones in the driftwood. So I got the 2.5 millimeters because they're in different colors. So this one's in a quite dark birch wood. And that's the 2.5. And then I also got three millimeters as well. And I don't know if all the colors, like if the different sizes always come in different colors or if it's just random. Like for instance, if the three millimeters always come in this light brown and if the two millimeters always come in this darker one. But anyway, I think it's really beautiful. I'm really excited to get casting on. For wooden needles, I'm not, I don't really use them very much anymore. Um, I was a huge fan of them when I began because they do have a bit more grip to them. My stitches wouldn't fall off the needles and as a beginner, you know, you feel a lot safer using wooden. And I know some people say that they would, um, got a little friend. Hi. But with that said, I also know some people like using wooden needles, um, not just because of the tactile feel of it, but because some yarns work better with certain materials. But yeah, my preference is generally to use stainless steel. I really like the Addy Click um, set of circular, of interchangeable circular needles. They're my favorite by far. Um, I use my finger a lot to push the stitches down and the Addies are quite rounded, so I don't hurt my finger. Whereas I was teaching a friend the other week actually how to knit, which is really lovely. Um, and I showed her on an old pair of my bamboo needles and they were deadly sharp. When I was teaching her, I, I, my finger, I had to be so careful not to press down too hard. And instead I showed her how to knit where you just slip the stitch off with the other needle rather than using your finger. But I'm quite a tight knitter. So I use my finger to help push it off just because of how much I do kind of strangle those stitches on my needles. So it's easier than using the, um, the other needle. But with that said, I really like these wooden needles. They've, I don't know if they've just polished them so well or if they've put some kind of coating on them because they, they don't have friction like a normal wooden needle would. So, can highly recommend, really like these. And I got them from a store that's local, kind of local to me. Um, it's called Cast Off Collective. It's a really lovely local yarn store. If you live in Australia and you can order online from them or if you're in Sydney and would love to call by, I would really highly recommend it. Um, the owner is really lovely. She's got a really sweet selection and it's just a cute little store. So yeah, I think if you can support any local yarn stores, absolutely do so. So I can highly recommend that one. So that's pretty much everything for last week. There's no crazy progress that I have to update you on. I haven't skeined up any of the, or rather I haven't caked up any of the tweed yarn that I bought for the shawl. So that's something on my list to do. Before I go, there's something I really want to say. The reason I started this channel is because I wanted to connect with the knitting community. At the moment in Sydney, we still have quite a few restrictions around, you know, maybe not as much as other places, but it means that knitting groups aren't happening and I never had a chance to join one, so I never really got to get involved with the community. But I watch so many knitting YouTubers and even though I'm really a lurker, I never leave comments. I'll just silently like a video and I'm trying to be a bit more interactive because I've realized how much it means to me when people do that. So I'm sure other people would appreciate it just as much. And already I feel like I've connected so much with the knitting community in just a few videos that I've put up. So it really means so much to me um, all of you who've taken the time to leave a comment or even just like the video and those of you who've subscribed I can't thank you enough and I'm really looking forward to all the videos I have out in the future and all the things that we can talk about and being able to interact even more it's feels like such a blessing and I am so so grateful for it so thank you with that said thanks so much for joining me again and I look forward to seeing you next week bye Bye.